Welcome to the Marie Manucherry podcast. Over the last 30 years, it has been my joy to assist humanity in aligning with their magnificence so they may heal, discover their natural gifts, and communicate with loved ones living on the other side. May you also experience delight while we dance in the powerful, intuitive world of energy. Let's get going. Hello, and welcome to Where Energy Meets the Divine. I'm Marie. Welcome back if you have been listening to the podcast. And welcome for your first time if this is your first time listening to the podcast. Before we go to our phone lines, I want to talk about not knowing. Humanity with its logical mind just wants to know everything. They want to know everything before it happens. They want to know why everything happened. They just want to know a lot of stuff. And yet that's not where a lot of power is. That's almost like a low vibrational power source in this having to know, having to know all the answers, having to do all the research before you make a decision. That's low energy vibration. That's a very fearful driven frequency. It is much better for you to enter a lot of things in the not knowing. And in the not knowing, when you haven't had a lot of research, a lot of ideas, or a lot of perceived perceptions from other people or other organizations, you move into a vaster place of co-creative possibility. What if everything is already healed? As a healer, before I connect with a person and I choose not to know anything about whatever's going on with their life, could be a health issue, could be something else that's going on with them when they reach out to me. And and so there's nothing in my documentation. We don't take an intake form here uh, in in my work. Uh, My assistants don't share information with me unless it's absolutely necessary, which is really rare because I want to stay in the not knowing that the not knowing allows for oodles of healthy, helpful solutions to come through. The human mind has very limited perceptions about all things. It's a limited organ. It's lovely and beautiful because there's things we have to do in this physical realm to live. We have to drink water. We have to make sure our technical equipment is working. We have to take care of other, care of other beings and creatures. There's probably hundreds of things we do all day long that require the mind's intellectual process because we live in a physical reality. But all the stuff you really want, all the stuff that's truly meaningful for you, including resources so that you can eat the food that you want and work the job you want or take time off or travel or pay for uh, unique health remedies, all the things you really, really want are not going to be resolved or attracted to you through the logical mind. They come in through the nothingness. Everything that's extremely valuable comes in from the not knowing, not the seeking, not the planning, not the organization of it, not that I'm going to check every line off so that I never make a mistake so I can have this thing. It doesn't work that way. It really won't work that way. That means that if you can allow yourself to let go and be in the not knowing and really stay in that frequency and that vibration of it, you're going to be attracting high vibrational molecules to whatever you are participating in, even things that are going to be in your future and your future could be tomorrow. I'm not talking about five or six years from now. So could you allow yourself to be in the not knowing? When you're in the not knowing, which is really the present moment, the present moment is very creative and playful. It's free. It's unique. It's powerful. When you're in the not knowing, you're naturally attracting solutions because you're not powering your brain to find a solution that exists that you're not going to like, let's say. Because people don't come see healers or psychics or intuitives unless they've tried a lot of other resources. It's typically what happens anyway. And they don't like the solutions that are out there. And so they're looking for someone who stands in the not knowing. They're looking for someone who's in the vibration of, wow, this has already been healed. Wow, you're already in a loving relationship. Wow, you already have an incredible career. Wow, you have enough resources to allow yourself to have financial freedom. That's what happens when you stand in the not knowing. You let go of so much 
negativity and lower vibration frequency, that you're attracting all kinds of unique solutions, ideas. And when you stay in that place, whether you're working with another person or not, you change your perception because you're having a unique in the moment, non-thinking experience. It's changing your perception because the perception for the human reality is you do this, you get that. It's literally what humanity says. You have to do this in order to get that even. Or if you don't do this, you're not going to get that thing. That's literally what the human mind says. That's what humanity says. It's what our education teaches us. Everything says that. And that's not true. That's not true. If you can stand in the not knowing, the nothingness, things are just going to fly into your life. The appropriate, healthy, vital, authentic, right action, perfect, needed things will come into your life. And most people don't know what that is. Most people have no idea what's in their highest good. That's why I love the question when I need an answer to something personally, I always use the phrase when I'm asking an intuitive question, please express to me whatever's in the highest good about the situation. And I may fill it in with more specifics, but not too specific. You want to even keep it general. You want to keep your questions to the universe general use higher self because the brain has no idea what the higher self means because the higher self is built on truth and expansion of authenticity from multiple lifetimes, not just this lifetime. It's a layered, layered reality when you ask for the highest good. And so the brain can't possibly come up with what's the highest good. The brain is logical. It comes up, well, you have to do it this way because this is the only way it's going to work. All these other bad things are going to happen if you don't do it this one way, which is not true. That's just based on perception. What a person believes is what they manifest. You change your belief, your perception, you have a completely different life. You manifest completely differently. So you need to stay in the nothingness, the not knowing, which allows you to be present. It allows you to completely and totally be present. I think sometimes animals will allow us to be in the not knowing, children, because they have like a spontaneity about them. You can't really totally figure them out. You just can't. Um, when I walk Charles, he definitely knows where he wants to walk. I'm not always in an agreement with him about where we're going because I may have a time constraint or something else, you know, might be too hot uh, for a super long walk, things of that nature. But most of the time I let him lead me. It keeps me in the not knowing. Like, oh, we're going to go this way. Oh, okay, great. And then I get to have a surprise visit from a beautiful deer or, you know, lovely other animals that I adore. Kids do the same thing. They, they actually, if people leave them alone, allow them to be their free, curious, powerful, wise creatures that they are, they introduce us into the nothingness. They do. They, they play and have imagination and freedom and fun that we tend to forget about as adults. We tend to forget about that flow of imagination and the not knowing, the nothingness. It's very fun. So I want to encourage you to participate in that energy. That means stop, please, listening to your brain. Please stop. It's, it's not going to help you. It's not going to get you what you want unless you're working on something that requires, you know, science information. Like if you're at work and you're an architect and you're helping to build a boat that's going to float, great. But you're still going to need your intuition to upgrade the process or download information that could allow humans to excel in our many forms of transport, transportation. So in those kind of cases, you still want to be in the not knowing while you use your logic. But most of us are not making boats that are going to float. Most of us, although I know a lot of people who work for Boeing who make a lot of, you know, help to make airplanes that stay in the air. So when you're not doing something crucial in the logical world, which could be a lot for many of us, please stay in the not knowing. When I, I go on, you know, uh, Zoom to talk to a client, and again, I know nothing about them, but I make little notes. I write down their name and I have a feeling about them. I've never met them most of the time. And I make little notes uh, about them and I sometimes draw out their energy. And so I'm, I'm really moving into the not knowing. Like I don't have any proof or evidence 
that those things that I wrote down about them are true. I've never met them before. I've, I have never seen a picture of them. I don't know their last name because I rarely look at last names because I have a hard time remembering names because humans to me do not look like their names. But I trust and allow myself to be in that not knowing. In fact, if you could trust experiences in the not knowing, you're going to see what type of information you're able to pull through based on your frequency and your vibration and more of who you really are, your authentic self. You're going to allow yourself to go, wow, I can pull in some pretty cool information, which is actually going to be helpful. And the not knowing you bring in helpful information and the needing to know everything, you kind of push away what's really needed. You push away the truly helpful information. So please practice the not knowing, not just in meditation, but as many times a day as you possibly can. And notice your frequency changing, notice your perception changing, and notice your life improving in every way. And let yourself be more surprised. I think it's a, it's a fun thing. Okay, now I'm heading over to the phone lines. And what this is, if you're new to my podcast, is people go to energyintuitive.com, they get on my podcast page, and they can leave a voicemail that I then play. So as you know, I have hundreds and hundreds of questions, and I get to your question as soon as I can. If I am not getting to your question in a timely manner, I'm sorry, I only take 10 to 12 per podcast, and I make two podcasts a week. So, um, And remember, we have hundreds and hundreds of questions, which I'm extremely grateful for. But l when you listen to the, the show, if you choose to, you are going to get your question answered through other people through their questions and the answers that I give them. So just stay tuned, have fun, enjoy yourself. Please don't worry and stay in the not knowing. You don't know. You don't need to know. That's exciting. I love it. Hi, Marie. My name is Jodie and I'm from Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. Um, I have been on a self-growth journey for the past couple of years and have found myself down the spiritual path um have come across your work and stories um online and i'm interested to know why when i get to a path of learning i get emotional or teary mm. and even it's a happy time mm. yeah i'm not normally a really outwardly expressive emotional person um i'm wondering why this would happen uh, love your work um thank you for sharing all you do it's um helpful to learn thank you so much thank you thank you jody why not have a tearful moment. I think it's because you are in more alignment than you typically are. I think you've shut down some of your emotional response system for probably a really good reason, like childhood. Maybe it wasn't safe to share your emotions. Maybe parents weren't available to talk about them or didn't want to. Some people don't like to talk about their feelings. So, you know, kids will learn to listen to their logical mind so that they don't continue to have hurt feelings by feeling ignored. So bring on the tears, bring on the joy. I mean, when I see certain animals out in nature, I have tears in my eyes. When I hear, you know, uh, young people say really beautiful and amazing things, I have tears in my eyes. There's nothing wrong with it. It's good. It's a good thing. You're, and I bet you anything when that happens to you, you're running energy faster in your body. So again, don't try to figure it out. Like who cares? You, you, more of you is coming on board. You're aligning to more of your authentic self and you're allowing yourself to have a full experience. And there are many beautiful and incredible things in the world that bring us to kind of a, a joint energetic experience, which includes a few tears, which is kind of cool. I mean, every time I see a bobcat, I'm so excited and delighted and in awe of their stunning beauty. I have a tear, but I'm happy. Nothing wrong with being happy. All right, on to the next question. Hi, Marie. My name is Nav. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. 
My question to you is, what is the next step in my career? I'm currently studying psychology, but I'm not loving the statistics part of it. Is it something I should keep pursuing? Um, as I do want a career where I can help people and have financial security at the same time. Um, or is there another job that's better suited to my life's purpose? Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to answer my question. Lots of love. Hello, um, Nav. I think I'm saying your name correctly. Statistics is hard. That's a hard class. Um, I didn't take it actually in nursing school. We had a choice of statistics, and if that's indeed, if I am understanding you correctly, or philosophy, which also was weird. <laughs> so I took philosophy instead, but all my kids took statistics. Um, I, I actually do think it is a good career path for you. Maybe you need a tutor so you can, you know, get all the studying you need for the statistics course, if I'm understanding your question accurately. But you're gonna you're gonna infuse your career path with other things like hypnotherapy, energy awareness, consciousness, and past life integration, inner child works. So you really like the holistic approach to interpersonal connection and healing through therapy, which is phenomenal. Uh, I do think you're going to make money in this career, but just know that you're going to have these other layers that you're going to utilize in your practice, which will be very effective for your clients. But I think you do want that mm, more structured initial education and there's nothing wrong with that. So I think you're doing great. Just hire a tutor if I understood your question correctly. Thank you. Hi, Marie. This is Bridget from Seattle. And I think you remember who I am, but who knows? You helped me in a pinch back in the early 2000s when I had flunked out of medical school and I was very sick. And you were just getting started. And I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to have quite a few energy medicine sessions with you. And you helped me so much. Yeah. So I think you know who this is. I was calling because I'm now teaching intuition development. Funny that <laughs> after my much need for that same service so many years ago, that's how, how it goes in life, right? We learn our lessons and then we hopefully share the goodness from them. And I find myself actually now feeling called to and doing more teaching in corporate settings. So actually I'm going mm. to businesses in business settings mm -hmm. and teaching intuition development to large groups, sometimes small, but um, I have 120 people this Thursday. So it gives you an idea of what's going on. And I think there's an area that it just would be fun to hear from you about, which is there's obviously a, an interest among the women of the world, perhaps quite a bit more <laughs> yeah. in addressing, bringing up, listening to and loving the spiritual side of themselves. I think yeah. it's a loud part of us and we get so much out of hearing ourselves in that way that is so healing and soothing where we click into it. And that said, in my setting now, I'm teaching her being around a lot of guys, um, some of whom walk into these sessions and go, okay, this is my team building event yeah. that my boss picked out. <laughs> and I find men are also highly interested in the topic. Mm -hmm. And I just would like to hear from you on that. I don't know how sometimes I may be, well, I'm, I feel like I find my words basically to make sure both the men and women feel included. Um, I just, I just think it's interesting. I'd like to hear from you guys, guys and intuition. And I know there's male energy and female energy, and I'll let you handle all that because I know some women have a lot of male energy, blah, blah, blah. Right. I'm just talking about men and women right now. Um, and the topic of learning intuition, anything you can share that would be uh, helpful to me as I go forward. Much love um, and happiness to you and your family. Bye. Thank you, Bridget. And of course, I remember you. You are in my book. So um, just a little backstory, Bridget. She didn't flunk out of medical school. She had an intractable seizure activity that wasn't correcting itself with medication. And, and they were like grand mal, and, or at least some of them were like grand mal seizures. So she had to leave um, medical school, um, had done her undergrad at Stanford, if I recall. And luckily for both of us, because it was a really fun experience for me, that's why I wrote about you, Bridget, in Intuitive Self-Healing, I um, was uh, ordered by the courts, actually, to go back to uh, nursing full-time because I had I was getting a divorce, and um, I, didn't, I didn't really want to go back to the hospital full-time. I was working on call and building a practice at home. 
but I wasn't making enough resources to maintain the house and take care of the kids at the time. So the judge had ordered me to go back. But luckily, um, Bridget's osteopathic physician was a client of mine. And I was explaining to her that I don't know when I'm going to see you. I have to go back to the hospital full time. And she said, why don't you just come work in my practice? I'll refer all my clients to you, her patients, which she did. And Bridget was one of them. And um, so, yeah, I got to work with Bridget many times and you healed yourself beautifully. I always believe that people heal themselves. You know, I'm a facilitator. I provide opportunities, but you healed yourself beautifully. And during those sessions, we did determine that medical school would not be a good choice. You didn't return. I said, you're a creative, which you are. You've had, you know, beautiful creative careers because we run into each other every once in a while. <laughs> I think the last time was 2019 on an Alaskan cruise uh, with an Esther Hicks workshop. That was the last time I saw you, I believe, Bridget. So I'm overjoyed by what you're teaching in the world. And I'm overjoyed that you're teaching in the corporate world because really successful people, regardless of who they are and where they work, are intuitive. That's a big aspect of what creates success for them is their intuition. I wish more men we're interested and it's happening. I mean, Bridget, thank you for, um, in, you know, working in uh, areas where there's going to be more men available to learn from you. I think that's great. I love having men in my classes. I'm not one of those teachers that, th that thinks, oh, I, I just want to teach to women. I, I, I want to teach to everyone. And I think it's great to have masculine energy in the class. I haven't really noticed a problem about language, but I honestly haven't taken a survey of the men who've taken my courses to find out exactly what they felt about it. I will tell you there's one word that I think most men don't like, and that is fear. So when I talk to them about a pattern they might be having or you know, my philosophy about the ego and fear, I don't think they like it. I think a lot of men are raised to be strong and powerful. And to save us and take care of us, all of us, right? Not just women, but, you know, um, to use their, their strong um, demeanor and, you know, masculine strength to take care of us. So they don't like the word fear. That's the one word I've noticed that when I feel blessed to have men in a course that I'm teaching, I try to avoid that word or I use other words too in the definition just because I, I don't want them to be in the, eh, eh, you know, and and kind of go offline for a second. But yeah, I love having men in the class. I, I love masculine and feminine energy. And we're both supposed to be balanced in masculine and feminine energy. That's for, for men and women. So feminine energy is the intuitive energy, but all men have feminine energy, just like all women have masculine energy. And, and we're coming together, uh, you know, as a species of people really embracing the opposite aspect of our um, of how we identify with ourselves. That's why I do love how people are changing whom they believe they are, who they talk about, who they are, because I don't think just having these she and he or him and her as our only choices is, is healthy. I think that we almost need to disengage from gender. And I don't mean necessarily change our bodies. I think people should love their bodies the way they are, but that's a whole nother topic. And I respect everyone's decision on what to do with their own bodies. But if we get out of these old stereotypes, you know, I happen to have a fair amount of masculine energy, but I happen to look very feminine. I like that feminine energy a lot, but I love that I have strong masculine energy too. So when we have people embrace more of these balanced energy, they become happier people, more fulfilled. They allow themselves to have fun and exciting experiences. So, so that's what we're really learning to do. And that's another reason we like to have male energy in a classroom, because uh, I think it helps balance the class. That's just my personal opinion. But I'm so excited for you, Bridget. Like, congratulations. Yay. Um, your students are blessed and lucky to have you. And thanks for calling. Hopefully I'll see you on a cruise or, uh, you know, an Esther Hicks class or something like that. Or if you still live here in Washington, um, somewhere, somewhere around town. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Hi, Marie. This is Maya. Thank you so much for listening to my question and just for all the work that you do. I'm calling in from Honolulu, Hawaii. 
And my question is, are animals souls that are also here to learn and evolve? I feel a lot of empathy for animals and my whole life, the suffering of animals has really affected me. And I often wonder why do so many animals have to suffer, especially at the hands of humans? I've been told it's to help us learn compassion, but I just get overwhelmed with the amount of suffering many animals have to go through. And I know it's a controversial topic, but in your opinion, do you think humans will move toward a time where they no longer need or want to eat animals for food? Thank you so much. Bye. Great question, of course, Maya, I believe is your name. I love Honolulu. I love, you know, I live close to the Hawaiian Islands, you know, um, because I live on the West Coast and the top of the West Coast. And I've been to, you know, the Hawaiian Islands many times, as you can only imagine, you know, many times. And I would never say that I'm a Hawaii type person. Like I have so many friends that they could just live in Hawaii. I guess I'm maybe not an island person, but I absolutely loved Honolulu. And I was just recently on Kauai, which I also fell in love. So I think I'm turning into a Hawaii person, (laughs) but I love Honolulu because you can go hiking on the Northern side and you can go shopping till late at night and even eat late dinner. Whereas like when you're on Maui, every, everything closes, it seems like around eight o'clock at night, like everyone goes night, night early, (laughs) but I, but I'm, you're very lucky to live in a beautiful part of the world. So let's get something very clear. You worrying about and staying in the suffering of animals is actually hurting your energy significantly because you've been doing this for a long time. It's not helping you to grow. It's not helping you to expand. You need to stay in your own lane Every soul that comes to earth and everything has a soul knows what earth is like and what most likely is going to happen to them. So you've got to get out of this whole idea of suffering. That doesn't mean that we encourage suffering um, or that we don't help when we feel inspired from a joyful place to not or uh, help suffering or we want to volunteer to decrease suffering, but it has to be from joy, not from fear, not from anger, not from disappointment. That's a very low frequency. And you need to stop this immediately. We don't even know who you are or what you can accomplish yet, because you've been wasting, in my opinion, a lot of your energy in something that's really not about you. Compassion is really something that younger souls are learning. Old souls already know compassion. And we do live in a a world where we're kind of 50-50 in terms of young and old souls. So again, I'm going to say this one piece again, animals know, just like humans, humans also suffer here on earth and even needlessly, truly, but souls know what they want to learn. And many times before they incarnate to a physical reality like earth, they've already tried to learn it in non-physical realities and they couldn't learn it. It could be something like personal power or their gifts or their talents or their ability to let go. I mean, learning to let go as you're dying is a powerful, highly sought after ability to be conscious and let go. And if we've listened uh, to the many, 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 many episodes on YouTube of humans who've had near-death experiences, nobody talks about pain. So we can be fairly certain that even when we're hearing screaming or moaning or anything of that nature, that's the body reacting, but that's not what the soul is feeling because I haven't met or heard. and, And I mean, even with the people I've worked with or the souls that I've talked to, but certainly from near death experience people, they never talk about pain. They talk about happiness. So I, I think what happens while I've seen it is that as someone is leaving their body, regardless of the circumstances and all death is considered a precious exit. It doesn't matter how someone dies. So you've got to get that out of your head too. a precious exit. It's, it's a wonderful thing to free your energy and let it go off to another reality, actually let it go home. So there's no judgment on how someone dies or if someone even kills someone, there's no judgment regarding it. Um, I think that every being is surrounded by angels and there's a, a very powerful and wonderful vibration. So there isn't physical pain at the, you know, when we're leaving our body and when they're, when we're creating food, animals for us to eat, um, most of the time it's, it's done quickly. Most of the time. So will there come a time when humans don't need or want to eat meat? Yes. Honestly, the human body hasn't been at a really, a uh, healthy vibration to live on plant-based food. Some humans, yes, especially a blood type. So I'm a fan of the Eat Right for Your Blood Type diet by Dr. Odami, 
Diodami. Yeah, he actually went to Bastyr here in the Seattle area. I think one of his children also graduated from that university. I know he teaches, I believe, in conventional medicine now, um, but I, I'm not, I've interviewed him, but I, I don't remember all the circumstances because I was in the not knowing, right? And the letting go. So A, blood types have great enzymes in their intestinal tract so they can convert carbohydrates into protein. O's, not so much. B's, uh, B blood types, AB, um, they have the ability to do some of that some of the time. So B's don't need a high meat protein diet um, they can go like 50, 50 where O's, uh, don't have, they lack the enzymes to create a pathway to let uh, carbohydrates turn into proteins and O's aren't great with carbohydrates. They, they don't, obviously they don't em emissify them or digest them or absorb them well in general, let alone convert them into protein. So I do see that though in the future, as we become more conscious and evolved, our body types are going to change and we'll be able to live off a plant-based diet. And I do think that uh, different manufacturers will create high proteins in plant-based food that let's say a majority of humans uh, would be able to utilize in the same way we have meat. So they're working on it, but you have to stop. And I'm not kidding when I say this, you are holding yourself back staying in the suffering of animals, knock it off, get out of the way, stay in your own lane, please. If it brought you joy, if it brought you joy to help animals who are suffering, then that would be part of your path to provide help and assistance. If it doesn't bring your joy, yourself joy, it's going to drain your energy. And the universe doesn't want anyone's energy to be drained. So everyone needs to be mindful of what feeds them and what doesn't. Like I've said before, I was the perfect person to be an oncology nurse. It fed me energetically. And that's why I also opened up psychically while working as a nurse. So you always want to pay attention to your frequency. It's, it's very simple. It's not complicated. Your energy is lowered. Ignore it. Get away. It's not for you. Leave it alone. Okay. Good question, by the way. Hi, Marie. My name is Jen. I'm calling you from Connecticut. I am wondering what your thoughts are about ayahuasca mm. and or psilocybin to try to reach our higher selves. Yeah. Mm. So that question is kind of general. Oh, also, if you could answer that more specifically for me, if you think that might be beneficial for myself. I have become more awake since the loss mm. in September of the love of my life Aww. and... I have been meditating and becoming more in love with myself and taking in deep breaths and pulling energy in and really growing and awakening. And a lot of this is due to what I hear from you. So thank you Aww. so much. And if there's anything you can tell me about myself <laughs> and what I can do to keep moving on, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. So I'm not a fan of all the different psychedelics in order to enhance spiritual waking. Now, I know it helps some people, but I don't think it, let's say it helps you or someone that you know, or people that you know, which is lovely. I think that's lovely, but it's not meant to be a consistent, constant thing to help because people can also have an unhappy, unfulfilled trip on psychedelics. You know, they can become paranoid. They can contract their energy. They can have negative hallucinations. It's a drug. And so we don't always know how the chemicals are going to interact with your own human form. Of course, people have to make these determinations on their own. If, you, if someone's already highly psychic, it's definitely not recommended because we don't want to mess up that psychic channel. We don't want to create problems. So you, you need to ask yourself intuitively. I think doing it once or twice is perfectly fine. But I, I'm personally, personally not a fan of doing it regularly to gain higher levels of psychic ability. I think it's great to have some doorways open if that's what you need and you've never had these experiences before. And then work on maintaining those doorways through meditation and learning to be present. Remember, Wayne Dyer, 
um, Ram Das, Timothy Leary, they took a lot of acid back in the day, you know, to reach certain psychic awarenesses. And they had to stop. And then they went to India and learned to meditate. And that's really when things expanded for them, for, for all of them. And for us, we were lucky to have them. I, I do like psychotrophic type, um, you know, uh, plant-based medicine for things like addiction, depression. I think that we have a wonderful wealth of potential and possibility to help people who are stuck in very negative self-harming patterns to click something in their brain so that they can have a different experience. Obviously, all of those type of health treatments need to be done in clinics under supervision, physicians or other clinicians that specialize in that. So I'm excited about that. But I'm not a fan of that being the primary tool or the frequent tool for psychic opening. But it can certainly help open up a few doors. But then it, needing to learn how to do it when you're not having chemicals in your body is wonderful. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Hi, Marie. This is Blanca. I'm calling because um, I was told I have certain abilities mm. and I'm trying to fulfill my soul purpose, the one true thing that I am truly here on earth for before I leave this earthly realm. <laughs> and I just am looking for some guidance, some advice from you. Um, I have dreams that come true. I have feelings about certain things certain people and my feelings towards something is always on point um as a child I saw things and at the age of 10 I saw something that scared the living daylights out of me <laughs> I was told I have certain abilities and I've been terrified about them and in my early 20s I was having dreams that they were coming true and it terrified me and I would go to bed saying I don't want to know I don't want to know and so I feel like I may have put a block on myself and there may be other blocks as well or that i put there or they're there for whatever issues I may have. I, because of my migraines, um, I've been working on myself, trying to be better meditating and, and being more of a positive person, um, especially because, you know, I want to be able to connect with my spirit guides and my, you know, loved ones in heaven, my angels and all everybody who's up there and watches out for us and that are trying to help. I know that there's a veil and I know that they're on the other side. I've had some very amazing experiences. Um, a couple of times connecting to the other side, but I can't do it on my own. Um, and I don't know why, and I don't know how to unlock that or open the door. So I need advice and see um, what you can help me with. I would very much appreciate it. And, um, you know, I just, I want to be everything that I need to be that I was meant to do and be on this earth. And I need some help. So I appreciate any advice you can give me. And um, I thank you for being here. And thank you for everything you do. Truly, you are a light in this world. Thank you. Thank you, Blanca. It would be great if you could start to feel that you have this continuous connection with the multisensory world. And I just want you to know, psychics, we don't just walk all day long unpresent to the earth realm. You know, we allow for information to come into us and, or we may ask for assistance, but we also know that because we're in human form, we do need to be part of the human realm successfully and happily and joyfully. That's, a, that's the integration we're looking for. So I would sit down with the universe, call a meeting with the universe. You could even say out loud, I'm calling a meeting next Monday at five. We need to talk about my psychic abilities. Just letting you know, I'm mean, literally speak it out loud to the heavens. And then whatever day that you decide, Monday at five, you bring your tea, you sit down. Obviously I like tea, I talk about it. And you tell the universe, okay, I know I have gifts. I know I have multisensory abilities. I'm really grateful for them. I know that I act like I'm very fearful about it, 
but I want you to ignore my fear and help me to have these experiences every day. The universe is really kind and compassionate. It's a very kind and compassionate energy. It, when humans start to have, uh, you know, lots of anxiety or a, adrenaline type fight or flight responses when spirit is approaching or when they're having spiritual experiences, the universe backs away. It's kind. So when we have fears and we know that we're shutting down, we need to communicate out loud verbally so that the universe knows that we've given them permission to allow everything to happen, regardless of how our body may respond. I think that's key. Um, feeling that you have these experiences every day and they're successful and healthy for you and, and give you the solutions that you want, even though you haven't had those experiences key when it comes to manifesting anything, you have to feel what you want as if it's already here. That's the key. So you have the gift. That's lovely. I would recommend you rest in the lower half of your body. Don't stay in your brain. Don't stay in your heart chakra. These vortexes obviously are still going to get energy, but if you kind of force your energy in the lower half of the body, that means the all of your body is going to have energy and the lower half of the body enters us, allows us to enter into the emotional response system, which is how we can access our intuition authentically and often. So those are my pointers. I hope they're helpful. Hi, Marie. Um, my name is Mary and I am from Sun City West. Um, I am calling for two reasons. Um, and I so appreciate your, your, any insights you can give me. I am having issues with the left hand side of my body. Um, anywhere from my, I had a very serious back injury a couple of years ago. Um, and I'm trying to figure out if that's what's going on. I have, um, I have an issue with my my left hip and there the pain sometimes goes all the way down to my leg um and i'm trying to figure out if it's stuck energy i had an x-ray done and they said that it was um it was arthritis i just am struggling with that because i um just struggling to understand if that's in fact the case or it is in fact some stuck energy. Um, I also kind of wonder about it being on my left left mm -hmm. hand side of my body. Mm -hmm. um, so anyhow, that is my main question. And if you are willing to answer my second question, um, I'm just, I've been struggling. I was in a long-term marriage and I'm trying to figure out if I'm gonna meet my person soon. Um, I have a lot of love to give and I just kind of trying to figure out why I haven't met that wonderful person. So anyhow, um, thank you so much for any and all help you can give me and blessings to you for all you do for, um, for everybody that needs help. So, and that reaches out. I'm so happy. I, I have the opportunity to listen to you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mary. I do think it probably is arthritic, but that's just the physical sense. Not, that's not the energetic sense. Um, I think you said it was the left-hand side. Sorry. <laughs> Don't recall exactly what, but I believe it was the left-hand side. So the left-hand side of the body is receptive. It's about taking an energy. If for some reason I'm, I'm not, uh, giving you correct information. It's the right. It's about your power, but I think you said the left. So hips are also about moving forward in one's life. And sometimes people hold themselves back and, and when the hip is affected, it can affect the entire leg because you've got muscles all attached and ligaments and tendons and bones connected to each other. So it's not unusual for it to be affected. The serapeptase is great for arthritic pain. And um, there's a ton of research on it. Even in modern medicine, they make their own in the lab that's, you know, uh, processed. It's not from nature, um, serapeptase, uh, but you can take it indefinitely if, if your body likes it and, and you don't have conventional medicine that would, that would 
be interfered with seropeptides like anticoagulants um, at 120,000 units per day. So I think you should start taking seropeptides and then you want to move forward. To create loving bonds, like a romantic partnership, what really needs to happen is you falling in love with you. That's really what needs to happen. If, if it's taken you a while to have a relationship, I think it's probably because you needed to get to know yourself better so that you can express who you are to a partner and have those deep and beautiful and intimate conversations and also fall madly in love with you. The more we love ourselves, the more we attract people who can love us at that level. So you always want to work on self-love. I think that's what's missing here. I think you want to feel love. You want to love someone too, which is lovely, but put all that energy into you and let's see what happens because I think it'll happen quick. Okay. I hope that's helpful. Hi, Marie. My name is Lindsay and I'm in Austin, Texas. And I would love any feedback you have for me. So um, anything that stands out. But um, my particular question is, um, I was hoping you could help me find more love, connection, excitement with my husband. Um, ultimately, my libido is next to nothing. <laughs> and um, despite really focusing on getting out of my head, living in my second chakra, finding my joy, not over empathizing with my husband, despite him often expressing his feelings of sadness and, um, you know, many difficulties with my very low next to non-existent libido, um, trying to stay, you know, recognize that that's, you know, might be part of his path is to deal with something like that. Um, however, I would love to feel excited and feel those, you know, you've mentioned that having, you know, sex in a physical body is one of the best things that humans yeah. can feel. And, yeah. Healthy. and I definitely remember feeling that way a while ago, Healthy, but good sex. anyhow, any, all feedback would be great. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lindsay. I would definitely get your hormones checked. That's the cause of libido issues is you know, estrogen usually, but it could be a dance between other hormones in your body. People are unique and different. I would go get your hormones checked. I definitely would. And let's say you get your hormones checked and let's just say they're all lovely. Make sure they test your DHEA as well, because DHA is like a precursor to hormones and it can balance them out and, and feed some lagging um, energy in the hormonal system. But I would definitely go get your hormones checked. And tell your husband to stop being talking negativity. It doesn't turn you on. And women are turned on by their minds, typically. Um, that's why women are a little bit more challenging or can be in terms of, you know, um, oh, you know, <laughs> orgasms and great sex and wonderful healthy sex. So tell him to stop complaining or go get some therapy or figure it out. He needs to be happy when he comes home or when he's home. Um, I think both of those things will help enormously. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Marie. Thank you so much for taking my call and providing such an amazing service for all of us. I am a teacher of the visually impaired for students in grades K through 12. Um, nice. I felt that was my calling because I also have a visual impairment. I am becoming very close to retirement in a year or two, and I'm very concerned about what other service I am going to be able to provide for humanity, animals, the earth in any way. Um, if you have any insights about that or things that I could possibly do right now, I'm drawing a big blank when I try to think of things. Also, um, my mother recently passed at mm. the end of December. I lost both my parents in mm. one year. Um, she promised me she was going to communicate with me from across the veil. Um, I've had a couple interesting things happen on my phone, but have not been able to okay. make communication with her in a way that I could definitely say that I have. Um, if there's anything that you can tell me to give me some insights on how I can really work on that. I've tried many of your techniques to raise my vibration and I continue to practice this every day. Again, thank you so much. 
Uh, you're very welcome, Donna. I'm so sorry about both of your parents passing recently. Um, I'm sure that's really hard. I'm so sorry. And thank you for the work you've done in the world and joyfully and happily. I don't want you to be concerned about what you're going to do next. That's a low frequency. And I think the reason why you're not getting any ahas is because you need a sabbatical. You need to rest. You need to have, go have some fun. I'm not saying that work isn't fun. You like to work. I get it. I like to work too. But when I go play, I get lots of inspiration, lots of awareness. It's almost like playing is part of that you know, marrying of the male and female energies, you know, bringing it all together so that you can have a more rounded perception of what's next. So do not think about what's next. Do not worry about serving the planet or other humans. You already have beautifully. We want the next thing to be just as joyful, if not more joyful. And you need to relax. You need to rest. You need a sabbatical. That's what I think. When you get a hit on your phone that you know, symbolizes your mother. That would be perfect that if in that moment you go ahead and raise your frequency. So you miss her and missing someone is a low frequency most of the time. And you miss your dad too, but you really miss her. So you get that little whatever is happening on your phone and then think about something unrelated that makes you feel happy. I don't care what it is. That's going to raise your frequency and then you can have a wonderful exchange with your mom. She's just patiently waiting for you to figure it out. She's not going to go anywhere until you have. So don't worry about missing her because you won't. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Marie. It's Magali from Texas. It's nice to meet you. I've had vivid dreams since I was a child. And some of the vivid dreams that are always in the back of my mind are dreams that I've had knowing what day I'm going to die and how many years I have left in this world. I would love to know if it's true or not, I really do want to be here a long time. My daughter and my family bring me great joy. And it would just bring me peace of mind to know whether or not this is true. Also, my career. Um, <laughs> I'm not too sure what to do in my career. I'm a pharmacy technician. Oh, yeah. I've been a licensed pharmacy tech maybe for 10 years. I've also been an artist since I was a kid, and I love art, and art brings me great joy. I, um, I don't know, I think just creating brings me great joy, so I'm really torn between staying in pharmacy technician now, uh, because that's what's bringing in money financially, or there's also like a course that I found recently, it's a free class for learning for like watchmaking and I don't know why a part of me really wants to try that maybe it's because I like creating I'm just hesitant um that if I do go into this full-time school watchmaking and also my art I'm I don't know I'm hesitant because I feel like I'm afraid that I won't I won't be making enough financially to to pay the bills, I don't know, to pay the rent or to help my family get them what they need to get my daughter what she needs. And so I'm a pharmacy tech full time now. Um, my whole plan when I started pharmacy tech, when I went back to work this year, this last year, I was planning on working as a pharmacy tech and then just slowly doing an apprenticeship at a tattoo shop because I love art and I really love creating and I love to give people pieces of art that they can always cherish and have with them so I'm wondering is it too much for me to try this watch making course should I only focus on pharmacy tech and just go into art when I can or should I just go all in and do this watch making course and also focus on my art I hope this makes sense <laughs> thank you so much I love you <laughs> I love you too. And all of you very, very much. So when you talked about the watchmaking, you didn't get really that excited, honestly. I mean, I think it's interesting. I think it's cool, but your energy didn't go. Mm. When you were talking about being a tattoo artist, your energy expanded. I think being a pharmacy tech is a great job. It's a great way for you to interact with people and create resources. But I think you should consider so that means you want to measure it with your, you know, measure the energy, a medical 
tattoo artists. So medical tattoo artists, like um, one of the things that they do when a, a woman or a man um, has their breasts removed, uh, you know, they when they do implants, the nipple isn't always available. Sometimes they're able to save it and reattach it later, but it's not, you know, every time, unfortunately. Or they put on um, uh, synthetic nipples. But some people prefer to have art where their nipples are, artwork. And so medical tattoos artists help with scars and missing parts and pieces. It's, I think it would be a fun career for you. They're paid well. At least they were, uh, you know, last time I checked. So I would look into what that would look like. And and it, you don't have to do anything right now. I think you're doing great in your pharmacy tech right now. I feel like you're catching up with things and paying things and, you know, enjoying the, the fiscal um, freedom that you've created. But the watchmaking, which sounds beautiful, but your energy was like... Argh. When you mentioned tattoo, it allowed you to, to have more of that creative energy. So go check out medical tattoo artists. And they usually work in clinics along with other practitioners, or some of them have their own facility, um, but physicians and practitioners refer their patients to them to have beautiful artistry put on their body to cover things or create things that are missing. Okay. That's what I think. Oh, no. Cause your question was about the dream, right? That was your first one. Uh, no, that was not real. There's five exit routes and who cares? Stop thinking about when you're going to die. You're going to die at the perfect moment for you. Everyone always does. And there's nothing anyone can do about it. Stop putting any energy into it. I would, I would not take that. That was a precognitive dream. It doesn't feel like it was precognitive to me at all. So, um, just get rid of that. That's what I think. Okay. Bye. Hi, Marie. I hope you're well. This is Sarah Beth from Ireland. My question today is about plant medicine. Last year, I did a ceremony and the first night was very profound, got a lot of insight, but the second night turned very dark. There was these entities and they took me to their world and taunted me. <laughs> yeah. There were spiders crawling all over my back. Yeah. And I also experienced consciousness through the lens of people I knew in my life with so schizophrenia cool. and Very I guess cool. paranoia. And it was just an overall scary experience. So I guess my question is, why does that happen? Is plant medicine good or bad? Or have you an opinion on that? And how do I minimize those experiences happening in the future? I'm very open to the spirit world and I want to develop my gifts. However, I think sometimes I'm a little bit fearful of opening up to the wrong thing or becoming maybe schizophrenic yeah. myself. So I think that kind of stops me. Would love to know your thoughts, anything that you have, any guidance. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Beth, I love Ireland, by the way. I'm going to be there next year. Yeah, I'm going to teach a workshop in July outside of Dublin um, for like a week. I'm really excited. So I've already talked about plant medicine on this uh, particular podcast today. Um and, and so you're proving my point, Sarah, about that you kind of don't know what's going to happen. That's why when people take plant medicine, they usually do it under the guise of professionals who can help people who are having challenges. And it's really hard on the body. A lot of people throw up a lot. You know, I hate to throw up. So definitely. And my guides told me never to do plant medicine. I have in my, in my youth, I've taken mushrooms and LSD, you know, once or twice. So um, so I am aware of uh, having a good trip and a bad trip, which you just can't tell because, you know, the chemicals are put together differently and our body chemistry might be different that day. So it's kind of a crapshoot. You don't know. But what's beautiful is you don't have to take plant medicine to become psychic and aware and conscious. It's not necessary. It certainly can open up some doors. But what I've noticed when people consistently take it, I've had clients who consistently take it. Like the door opens, but then it closes and they keep taking it because they want the door open and then it closes. So you want to learn to keep the door open when you're not taking plant medicine. I'm not worried about um, psychedelic type um, medication or plant medicine in terms of schizophrenia. At this time, I'm, I'm not concerned about that, especially people are doing it you know, under guise of others and uh, care of others and not too consistently. It's they're very strong and powerful drugs. I think their medicinal purpose 
on earth is more related to people who have mental health issues and addictions. I think that's truly the purpose of plant medicine. But once, you know, do we try it once is not a bad thing. The, the drug that I'm most concerned of was with um, schizophrenia or schizophrenia syndromes is actually marijuana. It's so much stronger than it ever has been. I mean, when I was young, you'd smoke some pot and you'd be fine in 30 or 40 minutes, you know, <laughs> like it's not like that anymore. And there is plenty of research, unfortunately, that says that people will have um, schizophrenic type syndromes. And if they continue to smoke marijuana, it could create some permanence because it's mostly young people who start, you know, uh, experimenting with drugs or, um, you know, playing with things like marijuana and the brain's not fully developed until we're 30 years of age. So when you have uh, powerful drugs that seem harmless like marijuana and you are a sensitive person, there is a potential risk of creating this syndrome, which can get out of your body, but could take years, could take years, depending on how much you smoked and how frequently in your youth and development. Um, or, Unfortunately, it could become permanent. So I would stay away from the marijuana and you ask your intuition and ask the universe to help you with your intuition and your psychic abilities every day, every single day and feel that you are excelling in your psychic abilities every single day. Feeling what you want as if it's already here helps tremendously in creating it to be in your life forever, permanently. That's what I believe. Thank you, everybody. It was an, another fun hour. I loved your questions. It's a joy. And I wish you all joyful blessings. Bye-bye.